there's so much opportunity coming down the pipeline for what we're doing. And, and, and not just opportunity, but there's going to be such a call for people in our position to go rescue and save all these people that have this policy. That's why I created my, my IUL rescue or rescue my IUL.com just, just to help people that are running into these problems because it's like, dude, you'd be, sh you know, no, you wouldn't be shocked. You talk to people too every day. Like people watching this would probably be shocked how often people are reaching out being like, uh, you know, I mean, I, I have, I mean, we've talked about, you know, I've helped a couple NFL players get their money back, you know, from their premiums uh, that they got stuck in these bad IULs. I've talked to, there's the MPI stuff, you know, like I talked to, I talked to, uh, to two people. I have, a, there's a guy that I, that I, uh, that has actually recently joined Life 180 and he's passionate about helping people protect themselves against MPI because he actually lives here in Phoenix with me and he's helped two people um, uh, win lawsuits and, and not even win lawsuits. They filed, they used attorneys, and they ended up getting refunds on their premiums after two or three years each. So that's how right? these guys like, are still in business is they're just getting bailed out. The insurance companies are just yeah. sweeping it under the rug by giving it's money back. It's hush money. It's Eventually hush money. Eventually that'll because, stop. Totally. Because imagine like what they're doing is they're saying, if Chris Noggle buys a policy with one of these companies, and I'm not going to name the, the names of the companies, but then you know, after a couple of years, Chris realizes, holy crap, this isn't what I was sold. And Chris has proof that it wasn't what he, what he was sold. He can then just go to the company, just, you know, pay a lawyer a couple hundred bucks to send a, send a, a notice and like, make sure you have it all packaged, right? The company is just going to give you your premium back for two years as hush money, just so that it doesn't turn into a bigger thing and it doesn't become publicized because that's their biggest risk. So we need to, we need to be loud about this too, because people are starting to get to the place where they're like, if it's so bad, you know, like somebody made a comment the other day about Doug Andrew when I was talking, like, if they're like, if Doug Andrew's so bad, how's he still in business? Well, he's not, you know, like, just go Google him, <laughs> you know, like, just Google these people. And if you, then it's buyer beware, if you're like, you can make an informed decision, but it's obnoxious to me, like just the level. It, it comes back to, you know, I always like to, you know, when, when I'm talking to people about IULs and they're saying, oh, I was showing this just the other day, one of a client I've been working with for a while who never ended up doing anything. He said, hey, my friend is an advisor and he, he I think I'm going to have him help it. It just seems right. He's my friend, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, hey, listen, I, that's perfectly right. fine. I said, let me just Perfect. do you one thing. We've been working together a while. Send me the illustration. Let me just try to tell you how to make it better. What do you think mm -hmm. he said? Now, remember, I'm talking about him specially designed whole life in the infinite banking concept. It's the only thing I'm talking about. Sends over two IULs. With a side Did really? fund invested in one mutual fund, one mutual fund, that was it. And then the rest in an IUL. And I, and I literally went through all the fine print. And I, I said, look at page you know, 14 of 30, mm -hmm. look at page 22 of 30. I said, read that. That's and insane. then let me know if that feels good. And, and he decided he instantly, he's like, I can't believe I didn't read this. I'm like, why doesn't anyone read that? It's right <laughs> it's so blatantly in front of you on the illustration. The problem mm -hmm. is the illustration is 30 or 40 or 50 pages long. Why? Well, well, because they got to make it super complicated because you are no way smart enough to understand this, which is why the advisor should just tell you this thing's going to be the greatest thing since sliced bread. Chris, I got to go one more round. This yeah, let's do it. stuff pisses me off. And I've seen this <laughs> twice now. You know the people. There's a young guy on TikTok and then the old guy that we were just talking about. I don't like using uh -huh. names because, you know, then yeah, they yeah. send us a cease and desist. They love oh, yeah. doing that. But, I don't uh, care. You know, they, they're both you know, taking everything we talk about and they're just reframing it. I literally like it's almost verbatim. The old guy's mm -hmm. almost verbatim what I said on a video. And then he's mm -hmm. like. And banks are the number one purchasers of life insurance in the world. They own more life mm -hmm. insurance than any yeah. other company. Mm -hmm. And he sells sure. IULs. Oh, it's 100% true. But let me ask you this. Bully, bank-owned life insurance. Has yeah. it ever, in all the history of banking, has it ever been IULs that mm -hmm. banks are buying? Um, I mean, IUL is a, is, is a new product. So the answer is no. Now, here, here's what I'll say to this. So I always like to like answer these kinds of questions with just uh, with common sense. OK, so and, and there's ways that we can get to the answers, even if there's it's impossible to actually get the truth. So let's go this way. So I'm going to push back a little bit. Right. And say, all right. In fairness, in fairness, banks don't actually disclose if they have whole life, UL, IUL, or anything like they just disclose they have cash value life insurance. Okay. So we have to acknowledge I can rebuttal that, that easily. Okay. 
Okay. So we, we say that and then we go, okay, historically speaking, banks have been doing this for over a hundred years. Okay. So if that's the case, IUL didn't even exist. So we know it had to be whole life because that was the only cash value life insurance that existed. So we know banks have whole life unequivocally. Now what I do is I like to come closer to, to now and I like to look at the banks that that buy or that that were doing the the insurance back lines of credit or the uh, cash value lines of credit, however you phrase them. Um, yeah, and, CV lines it, of credit. Yep, CV lines of credit or IB locks or whatever. Yeah. And, and, but but here's the deal: you can go get those on whole life, and they'll lend you ninety five to one hundred percent of your cat, net cash value in the policy. I have them. If, I have them. And it and 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 there was a time a couple of years ago where that made all the sense in the world. Right now, the lines of credit lines are higher. I mean, there's some convenience or whatever. But the point to this is, is those banks won't typically lend you on, give you a insurance backed line of credit or cash value line of credit on an IUL. Not okay? at all. So the banks top know three that. ones will not give right. you a CV line of credit on an and, IUL, period. And here, and here's the deal. A couple that will still will only give you up to a 70, a 50 or 50 to 70% that line of credit up to the cash value. So they understand the risk. They understand the problems. And so if that's how they're handling it with you, do you think they're going to put their own money there? Or do you think they're just going to put it in the whole life? Like they understand the risks and, you know, so, and they've been using whole life forever. And so like, you know, it is. Bravo. It is. Like, they're, that was great, man. I love the way you kind of took that back and you brought it current. And then you're like, but why would they, if this is how they're actually yeah. treating it from a lending standpoint? Yeah. So I don't know. It's just uh, you know, lies, lies, and more freaking lies. Common sense is seldom common practice. That's what one of my mentors used to tell me. <laughs> so well, let's pivot a little away from the uh, imaginary, imaginary unicorn life products and let's go mm -hmm. into just the most boring product that has pretty much ever been created. You know, the one that we use every single day to change yep. people's lives, whole yep. life insurance. So what with whole life? would you tell somebody is a reason why they should consider that product? Forget um, about the infinite know, banking concept, but what mm -hmm. about a whole life is some of the things that you think yeah. are the most critical things people need to know? Well, let's not even talk about the technicals of the product and why um, logistically or technically it makes sense. I'm just a big believer. Like we started this conversation off talking about our, about our concerns about the economy and the political, like, situation that's going on in the world and and all these things like so I, I i just before i go here i would just say to everybody and i know if you watch chris's channel here i i know you've contemplated this already but where do you think taxes are going where do you think inflation's going where do you think national debt is going like all these different things right like so and, and so i'm just a believer i i don't believe there's one right thing or one wrong thing or there's a right way or a wrong way i just believe that we need to align our money with our values and beliefs like and and chris and i do what we do because we have a set of values and beliefs and we're aligning our money with our values and beliefs and, and we're going to execute to try to create a life that we want to live. I mean, it's, it's really that simple. Like we can, we can break it down that simply. And so why do I utilize whole life insurance is because it's in alignment with my values and beliefs. And why do I think everybody should? Well, I don't know that everybody should, but what I do think everybody should do is think about like, what do you prioritize in life? What do you think is going to happen in the world? What do you value? What do you believe? And really break that down. And what I know is there's this great book called The Ant and the Elephant. Uh, this guy, Vincent Pacenzi, wrote it. And he did this analogy, or there was a, he referenced a study. And in the study, he said when, when and they scanned, they did these scans of brains, you know, of, of brain activity. And when we make a conscious decision, I don't care if it's talking about budgeting, saving money, losing weight, getting out of debt, all that stuff. When we make a conscious decision, 4 million neurons a second are firing off in our brains, okay? Our subconscious mind is 4 billion neurons a second. So what happens is if you don't believe that you're going to be successful with something, the human brain is not going to allow you to put the effort into it for you to actually have a chance of succeeding, right? And so we have to get to the place where we believe subconsciously because the whole reason this book was called The Ant and the Elephant is because you thinking that you're going to just be able to white knuckle your way through life consciously overriding your subconscious is the equivalent of an ant sitting on the head of the elephant thinking it has a chance to steer the elephant. The elephant doesn't even know it's there, right? And so the crazy part though, is when we, when we break this down and we look at that and we go, okay, if, if that's the case, 
Well, we have to figure out and we have to know what do we what do we want to accomplish? Where do we want to go? What do we want our life to look like? What do we value and believe? And is our money in alignment with it? And we have to understand what we're even what we're even doing in the first place. And so I think what happens is if we get rid of all the what's the rate of return, what's the liquidity year one, what's this, what's that, and we start thinking long term because you don't solve long term problems or short term thinking. So if we start thinking long term enough and we just think about, okay, who am I? I'm married. I've got three kids. I, I love real estate investing. I run my businesses. What are my values and beliefs? I believe I am the the best investment I'm ever going to make. And I like I, I all these things that I go down through. And when you back it out, I believe that we need to save before we invest. I need to believe. I believe we need to save with the purpose of investing. I believe that you are not an investor unless you have a foundation of financial safety first. You're a speculator. You know, so I believe, I believe all these things. And the challenge is, I think people are too reactive with their money and they're just going and giving their money to other people and hoping that, you know, somebody's going to solve your problem for you. You know, like there's no financial advisor, no financial salesperson that's going to go out that you're going to give your money to that's going to be able to solve your problems. Only you can do that. Only you can do that, right? And the challenge is, I don't care... Like we know this in, in my new book I'm writing, I talk about the five F's of life, faith, family, finances, fitness, and freedom, right? Everybody wants freedom. That's what money is. Money's got to be a tool to get us to financial freedom, period, right? We, I, I think we can all agree to agree on that. Okay, if that's the case, think about it this way. With our faith, Chris, right? Like, can you outsource your success with your relationship with God, whatever that means to you? Can, can you, you can, outsource can, your success? Yeah. Can somebody else improve your relationship with God as you understand no. it? No, you have to do, you have to be in the Bible. You have to pray. You have to talk. You have to, that's a relationship that only you can manage. Can somebody outsource your success as a father, as a husband? Definitely. You know, can you, no, right? That's going to be a problem if you do, right? Can somebody outsource, can you outsource your success with your fitness, right? With your health, Get up right? And run no, you got to do the pushups. You got to eat well. You got to be intentional about all that, right? I believe you can't have pure freedom without a good relationship with your higher power without a good relationship with your family, without your health, and without a good relationship with money. Somehow, I think everybody would agree with the first three that that we have like we have to take radical self-accountability if we want to be able to attain freedom in those areas. Somehow with our money, we've been tricked. And you've been told by people like Dave Ramsey that you're too stupid to get it, that it's too complicated, right? And so, so I know this is like the longest of long answers of all time, but the reason I think everybody should get whole life insurance has nothing to do with the technicals, but it's because of the process of you going down that process of, of saving money, building your foundation, making sure that it's a self-completing plan, that your family will be taken care of, that it's going to, that, but the whole process in that journey is going to force you to become who you need to be with your money to live the life that you want to live. And it's about the journey more than anything.